Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We have the kit reveal for Thorin, as well as the requirements to unlock him. We're going to be going through all of that. All I can say to you guys is you really want to get this character, and there is a chance you can get him as free to play in time for the event, depending on where your characters are currently farmed to. We're going to get into all of that in a minute, but first let's take a quick look at Thorin and why he is so good. His basic ability, attack the target enemy two times for 95% damage and inflict weaken for one turn. This seems to be quite a common theme with weaken from the basic ability, but I guess any time that you can reduce the damage of your opponent, it's not a bad thing. For his first special ability, inflict mark for two turns and attack the target enemy for 280% damage and inflict daze for two turns. Now one thing I will say is Thorin has the potential to do a hell of a lot of damage and putting marked for two turns on your opposition is going to be a huge part of the strategy for this team and that's going to come into play with his second special ability you double the stacks of Overwhelmed on the target enemy, and we'll get back to that in just a second. You then attack the enemy for 430% damage. On kill, gain 2 stamina for this ability. Inflict Marked for 1 turn on the most wounded enemy, and reduce their turn meter by 100%. This particular ability is really meant to rip teams apart and you think about something like the Elves, you might be able to get to Elrond quite easily. If you can get marked on him, you can tear him down and it doesn't matter how much protection you give him, he'll have no defense against it. But you might be wondering what Overwhelmed actually is. When you put Overwhelmed on your opposition, when they are attacked, they receive an additional 20% damage per stack. Now you can have up to 10 stacks on your opposition, so that is going to mean that they can have an extra 200% damage done to them. This is going to be extremely important, especially for phases 2 and 4 of the raid. Thorin is going to absolutely dominate those chapters, guaranteed. Now moving on to his passive ability, whenever this character uses an ability, grant one stack of assistance to one random Thorns company ally, and when an enemy that is overwhelmed is attacked, gain 10% turn meter. So that is going to really help with those assists as well because they're being attacked more often, so more turn meter being fed to the team. They also gain 15% max health and 30% resistance, meaning that they're a lot less likely to be receiving those banes. Now for his leadership ability, and this is where this team really comes into their own. When Thorin's company squad members attack the same enemy consecutively, inflict one stack of overwhelmed up to a max of 10 stacks. If the target enemy has marked, they cannot evade or block the incoming attack. Remove all stacks of Overwhelmed when another target enemy is attacked. When an enemy with Overwhelmed dies, Thorin's company squad members gain 10% turn meter and heal 10% of their max health. Thorin's company squad members gain plus 20% focus and 20% max health. Okay, that is quite a lot to digest, so many different things happening there. So what you're essentially trying to do is get marked on your opponent, and then everyone attacks that one opponent, building up those stacks of Overwhelm, doing all of that extra damage, plus the assists that they're going to get, so you're constantly attacking that same enemy. So when you're looking at something like the Balrog, if you can get marked on him, it doesn't matter whether you're blinded or not, you're still going to be able to do a lot of damage to him. There's also quite a bit of turn meter gain and healing just by having Thorin as leader. So he's definitely someone that you want on your roster. 
Now, the thing that's going to change is whether you're going to get him the first time he appears or whether you're going to be preparing for the next time that he comes back, which is probably going to be somewhere around March or April in the new year. But if you are going to get him the first time around, you're going to need to be ready by the 11th of December or at the latest by the 18th when the event finishes. You still have that little bit of time to get those extra few shards done on your characters if needed. So who do we need? I was on the right track with Misty Mountains, but CG have thrown a slight curveball and reduced that to just needing the Goblin Faction to unlock him. They do also mention Wargs, but of course we don't have them in the game at the moment, nor do we have any information on when they are going to be here. So let's just assume that that's something that's going to be added after this event, and we may be able to farm them for the next time that Thorin comes around. Now, some of you may be terrified because it's goblins. Others might be really happy if you did jump on them early in the game. Now, in the beta, the goblins were by far the meta of the game. They did get a little bit of a rework and a nerf for when the game officially launched. So a lot of people have avoided farming the goblins since the start of the game. Now, technically, the goblins are a free-to-play team that you could have farmed all the way up to seven stars by now if you did get on them early but if you didn't then they can be a very tough farm even to get to the five stars to unlock him so is it possible to farm the goblins so that you can unlock him before this event ends this leaves us three weeks in order to get our characters to five stars and get this event done so that we can at least put him on our roster and then finish off the seven stars when the event comes back. This is really going to depend individually how far you guys have been able to farm your characters up to this point and then plan for that three weeks. So what I'm going to do is show you where my characters are up to and what my plan is from here to get those characters ready then you'll be able to decide whether you're a little bit in front or behind and how you might be able to adapt that strategy for yourself. Now, as you can see, my goblins are all over the place here. So what we're going to do, we're going to start with the easiest one to farm and that is Grimper. Now, because he is in the second chapter of the guild nodes, he is by far the easiest character. You could get him all the way up to seven stars very easily. So to get him to five stars, you don't even really need to refresh the guild nodes and energy. Just make sure that you're collecting all the free energy every day and you shouldn't have any trouble getting him up to five stars. I'm not too far away. I should be able to do this easily within the next week and you don't have to spend your crystals on him whatsoever. Make sure you're saving them for some of the other characters. The other one that is relatively easy to farm is Goldburz. Now, a lot of people have been getting him from the arena store, especially early on when there wasn't that many to get. So you may or may not have him pretty well farmed up. Now, if you don't have him at least in that four star range and up to sort of where I am, you're probably not going to have him in time for the event, which means that you're going to be planning for the second time this comes around. But make sure that you do start farming this guy because you will have a chance to get him all the way up to seven stars before this event returns and that way you'll be able to get the maximum version of Thorin the next time he comes around. Now let's talk about the ones that are a little bit harder to farm, and we're going to start with Orphurs. You can get him from Light Side Campaign 4-5 hard. Most players should have this node at three stars. If not, it shouldn't be too hard to get done so you can farm him. He does cost 80 energy to do your five attempts to try and farm him each day. This is where you've got to be a little bit more tactical about the way that you spend your crystals. We do get plenty of rewards both from our objectives and from the arena each day. So you don't have to spend money to get these crystals. 
I currently have him at two stars. I'm on 20 of 55 to get him up to three stars. This means I need 245 shards between now and when the event finishes in order to get him to that five star level. That means I'm going to have to get 12 shards per day, meaning I'm going to have to do at least one refresh, which I can do for 25 crystals. I don't necessarily have to refresh my energy. I can use the energy that I accumulate during the day as well as the bonus ones that they give you. If I'm using that efficiently, I could do that without spending the extra crystals refreshing energy. It is very possible that I could achieve this in time for the event. Hopefully you guys are a little bit further ahead so that you don't have to worry too much. You might be able to do it just by doing your normal farming every day without having to refresh. The closer you get to the event, you may have to consider that, but you also have to keep in mind that the other one that you're going to have to farm up is Chef Kraska. Now this guy here is definitely a bit harder to get. He is on Shadow 4-9 hard. That can be a difficult one to get the three stars on. Luckily I am able to farm him. He is a little bit further behind though. He is only at one star at the moment, almost at two stars. So to get him up to five stars, I'm going to need 14 shards per day to get him there which probably means I'm going to have to do the refresh for 25 crystals, then a second one for 50, and I'll probably also have to spend 50 crystals to do an energy refresh in order to get these done. So that's 150 crystals per day that I'm going to need just to farm those two, and you can cover that in the rewards that you receive. You're also getting extra crystals from the raid depending on how far through those reward paths you can get. So there's plenty of crystals on offer so that you're not having to spend your own money. It's just going to depend on whether or not you're able to get them there. Given that Chef Kraska is almost right at the very start, not far past the unlock, you can still get him up to that five star level even if you haven't unlocked him yet depending on if you're able to three star that particular node. Now the one that is going to hurt players the most is definitely going to be the Great Goblin. Now when they put all of those other starting characters into nodes not that long ago, we were wondering why they didn't include the Great Goblin in that. And I'm sure this is why, because they know that you're going to have to use crystals to farm this guy. Now if you go back all the way to when you started the game, the Great Goblin was that first 7 day reward to unlock him at 2 stars. All of the shards that I've got for him so far have just been ones that I've been getting from the free chests. I haven't actually been farming him, but in order to get him up to 5 stars, I'm going to need him to appear in the store 45 times in the next 3 weeks in order to get those shards if they only give me five at a time. Hopefully there are ones that they have for 10 shards just to make that a little bit faster. But if we're going by the maths of five shards every time this refreshes, then there's definitely enough time to be able to collect those shards. The problem is that you're going to need 6,750 crystals just from where I currently have him in order to get him to that five star level. For myself, I have not been spending my crystals since Elodin was unlocked. I did have so many crystals saved up until all of a sudden they released a Nazgul that I wanted to try and get a little bit higher. I ended up spending 12K in crystals just to try and get him to five stars, hoping for something better. So I ended up stopping there and saving those crystals. I still have over 8k, so I do have enough there in order to get the Great Goblin. So with those extra crystals that I've got on top of that, if I do need the extra refreshes, I'm fairly confident that I can get there without having to spend any money. But everyone's going to be in a different situation. Let me know in the comments below how close you are with some of these characters. 
If I can help you get there and develop some kind of strategy, I'll definitely help you out with that. But if you are a little bit further behind, don't get too discouraged. Look at it from the point of view that rather than having three weeks to get this ready, you've got four months to get them ready. There is also a silver lining to having to farm the goblins. They are a very, very good team in the raid. So having that extra team that can do massive damage, get you a lot of points in the raid and a lot of rewards is definitely not a bad thing. The only advice that I'm going to give you if you cannot get him first time around, start farming the team right now. You don't want to wait until they announce him for the next time around and realize that you haven't done anything with him and then have to panic farm again. Just get these guys bare minimum up to five stars so that when he does return, you're always going to be able to unlock that next legendary character. That's it for this one, guys. If you do want to support the channel, a super thanks would be very much appreciated. Other than that, like and sub, you know the deal. we got plenty more Heroes of Middle-Earth coming your way. Don't miss out, and we'll catch you in the next one.